to the Operations on the Real Numbers course. I'm Mrs. Cofield, and I am so honored to welcome you back today. And we're going to be talking today about lesson number 19, and that is the applications of division. Now, these applications are real world problems, and we're gonna use all the stuff that you guys have been practicing in the last few days, such as division with integers and division with fractions and mixed numbers, the guys we get rid of, you know, and all of those different concepts and even dividing with decimals. So you guys ready to jump on in? Let's do it. All right. So the first thing I want you guys to know is that similar to before, there are two main applications of division. So make sure you write this in your handy dandy notebook. Those two main applications are Number one, dividing a quantity into equal parts and wanting to find how much of the quantity goes to each part or how many parts there are. And then number two is finding a rate, okay? So I'll give you a second to jot that down because we have, again, two main applications of division. Now, I don't want you to think too hard about it, like, what are you saying here? It sounds pretty difficult. Well, trust me. It's not that hard. It's everything that you've been doing, okay? So let's jump right in. Here we go. So number one, it says, three friends are splitting a bill at a restaurant. The bill is $21.63. How much did each one pay? So as you see here, just like we said in those, you know, two main examples, is that now we're taking something and we're splitting it into equal parts. But the question is, how much did each one pay? So if we were to set this up mathematically, knowing that there are three friends that are at this restaurant, then we're gonna take that $21.63 bill and we're gonna split it into three. In other words, the way we're gonna write that is 21.63 divided by three, okay? And so you all know how we divide decimals, right? All we have to do is remember to respect the decimal, right? I mean, like R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what that decimal means to me, okay? So let's go ahead and set up the division and let's see what it looks like. So again, in this case, we're gonna put the left dog in the house, okay? Cause he's kinda on top-ish, you know I mean? <laughs> so we end up with 21.63 divided by three. And then, like I said, put some respect on his name. So our decimal is gonna go right here. And, and when I say respect the decimal, that means just like place it right above where it is, like in the original problem. So since that original decimal is right there, the one goes like right above it at the top, okay? That's where the decimal goes. Now we can go ahead and divide as usual. Now, how many times does three go into two? Well, obviously three is bigger than two, so it's not gonna go into that, but we can do three into 21, and that's seven times, right? So seven times three is 21. Once we subtract, there's nothing, but we can bring down that six. Now, my esteemed colleagues, how many times does three go into six? Correct, that is two. So we put our two at the top and we subtract as usual because three times two is six, so we end up with zero. And now we can bring down our last number, which is three. And finally, how many times does three go into itself? Three goes into three one time. And so three times one is three. We subtract and we don't have a remainder. So that's a zero at the bottom. So look at that, guys. We end up with 7.21. But remember, we're talking about money here. And we're trying to figure out how much did each person pay at the restaurant when they split it three ways, right? So after dividing by three, we can conclude that $21.63 split up between three equal people, three friends, is going to give us $7.21. But we wanna make sure we always answer the question in English, right? Seven and 21 hundredths, that correlates to money is $7.21. So in English, I'm gonna say that each one would pay $7.21. Simple as that. And that's not too bad for three people at a restaurant, especially if it's some good food. I'm imagining something like Mexican food or maybe like Chinese food. Like, oh my God, like I can just imagine the possibilities. I told y'all I love to eat. 
Okay, so we're going to go to the next problem. It says a person ran five and a half miles in three hours. If he ran the same amount of miles each hour, how many miles did he run each hour? So here we go again, okay? So this person is running five and a half miles in how many hours? That's in three hours. It says that he ran the same amount of miles each hour. How many miles did he run each hour? So remember what I told you guys, there's two types of division applications, right? On this one, it kind of sounds like they're asking us to find a rate because we're trying to figure out exactly how many miles did he run per one hour, right? Remember that word per? That word per means one. So we're about to break it down using our division skills to find out in reality, how many miles did they run per hour? So if we were to set it up mathematically, it would look like this. That would be five and a half divided by three. Now in this case, if you notice, we have a mixed number there. And what did I tell you guys about mixed numbers? Do we divide using mixed numbers? No, y'all. We don't divide using mixed numbers. We get rid of those guys. They gotta go, right? So what we can do is we can convert it into a fraction by doing two times five, which is 10, plus one, that's 11. So we'll end up with 11 halves divided by three. And we already know that three as a fraction is three over one. So, you know, we just went ahead and threw that in there too, okay? So don't forget, all whole numbers as a fraction are over one. So now, for the fun part, right? Now I'm gonna put my pencil down for this one. So I told y'all yesterday, how do we divide, or maybe the day before that, how do we divide using fractions? Well, you have to multiply by the reciprocal in our sound effect. So we're gonna multiply by the flip, okay? So if we do that, then we're gonna end up with 11 halves times one third, okay? That's so much better, right? Because we know that multiplication is so simple. All we have to do is multiply straight across. Now, if we multiply straight across, 11 times one gives us 11, and two times three is just six, okay? So we end up with 11 sixths. Now, we could leave it like that, but in this case, I'm going to change it back to a mixed number because that's what they gave us. But sometimes it's okay to just leave it like that. So we'll say it's one and five sixths, okay? Now again, we always wanna make sure that we're going back and answering the question in English. So the question was, how many miles did he run each hour? Again, we're looking for that rate, right? So let's answer the question. Again, knowing that our unit is miles, we can tell them that he'd run one and five six miles per hour. Now if that was a car, you'd be like, okay, you're moving kinda of slow, right? But we're running, so that's pretty good, okay? So he's running one and five, six miles per hour. Beautiful. Any questions about that? If not, we're gonna move ahead, okay? So let's try another one. Now, suppose we have seven pounds of cheese and wanted to divide the cheese equally into small bags where each bag holds half pound of cheese. So how many bags do we need? Sounds like we're kind of like at the little grocery store, maybe in the deli section, and we're trying to put these seven pounds of cheese into those little bags. Maybe the customers can just easily get them, right? But we're going to find out if we divide seven divided by one half. Let's see what we end up with, okay? So let's set that up. Seven divided by one half. Now again, I told you guys that any whole number, when we divide, any whole number as a fraction is technically over one, right? So that's technically seven over one divided by half, right? But we know that dividing by half means we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal, and that's gonna give us two over one. So we have seven over one times two over one. That's beautiful, so far so good, right? And now it's down for the easy stuff. All we have to do is multiply straight across, okay? So seven times two is 14, and one times one is one, we end up with 14 over one, and we already know what that is, that's just 14. So, to answer their question, how many little baggies do we need? 
if we're putting a half pound of cheese in each bag and we started with the whole seven pounds, we're talking equal parts here, we're gonna need 14 of those bags. And we wanna let them know that in English. So to answer the question, we need 14 bags. Beautiful. I'm loving this. You guys are doing a great job out there and I wanna make sure that you get this in your notes. All right, now let's move on guys. Cause you guys, you got this. Okay, so for our next example, it says a painter who was painting a school has 108 gallons of paint. Each classroom requires seven and two tenths gallons of paint. How many classrooms can the painter paint? So again, we're starting with 108 gallons of paint and we know that per classroom, it's gonna be seven and two tenths gallons of paint. So when we divide that up, the question is, how many classrooms can this painter paint? Well, guys, looks like you know what we have to do. Do, 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 do. We're gonna divide. So let's set it up. When we set it up, we have 108 divided by seven and two tenths. Whoa there. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who out there can remember what we said about dividing by decimals? <laughs> you got it. We don't. We ain't about to divide by no decimal. No. That guy has to go. Hey. <laughs> Y'all like my flow there? Okay. So we have to get rid of this decimal. But can anybody remember how we said we're going to get rid of it? Yes. Someone knows about equal opportunities out there. So we said whatever we do on the right side, we also have to do on the left side. And in order to get rid of that decimal, it's going to be simple. We're just going to move it over to the right. But the amount of times we move it over to the right on the right side, we also have to move it over to the right on the left side. So let's pull it apart a little bit so that you can see how we're going to move that decimal place on our 7 and 2 tenths or 7.2. So we have our 7.2. And if I was to move my decimal place one point over there, it's now in the back. And that's going to give me a 72, a clean 72, right? But if I have a 108, uh-oh, where is my decimal on a 108? 108. I don't see a decimal. Ooh, yes. I heard you back there. Now, what you guys need to know is for all whole numbers, there's a little imaginary decimal all the way in the back that's hiding out there, right there. So if we're going to move that guy to the right, then guess what's going to happen? Doop! The decimal's there. But now we're left with a little lumpty. <laughs> but you know what we can put in there, right? Let's just drop a little zero in there. So technically, if we have that decimal place in the back, like I told you before, that's a whole number. But our new whole number is 1,080. Okay? 1,080. So in reality, what we're dividing is 1,080 divided by 72. Wow, isn't that pretty? And this, we can do. So let's go ahead and divide. These are like regular whole numbers and that just became so much easier, even though that number is still 72, but y'all got this, right? So here we go. 72 goes into one. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't go into 10 either, but we know it goes into 108. And that's a whole one time, right? <laughs> so that's 72. Now we can go ahead and subtract. 8 take away 2 is 6. And we're going to do 10 take away 7. That's 3. We end up with 36. And we can bring down the 0 right here. Now, how many times does 72 go into 360? Hmm. I happen to know that that's actually 5 times. Okay? five times and five times 72 is actually 360 and we are left with no remainder okay so guys it turns out like i said that if we were to rewrite that as 1080 divided by 72 then once you go ahead and divide as usual you end up with 15. so again we want to make sure that we answer this question in english how many classrooms can the painter paint? Well, my esteemed colleagues, 
To answer the question in English, the painter can paint 15 classrooms. Just like that. That makes me want to think about some colors. Painting sounds really, really good right now. Okay. But that was so simple and so beautiful. So again, dividing decimals, you always want to get rid of that decimal because we don't divide by decimals. Get rid of those guys. And then you can divide as usual. Beautiful work, everyone. And now, just to make sure that you have held on to everything we've covered today, we said there are two main applications of division, and you've just seen examples of them both. So just to make sure you have these in your notes again, the first one says, it's dividing a quantity into equal parts and wanting to find how much of the quantity goes into each part or how many parts there are. And then number two is finding a rate, okay? So again, make sure you have this in your notes because in reality, these main applications are pretty simple. Division is also pretty simple. Guys, oh, I don't know what to say right now. We've made it through lesson number 19. And did you realize this is our last lesson? Oh, I'm calling you emotional, guys. This has been so amazing. And I'm just so honored to have been able to work with you all during the operations on the Real Numbers course. <sighs> Sometimes saying bye is hard, but I want to let you guys know this is not goodbye. This is a see you later. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. Once you're part of the MathCore family, you're always a part of the MathCore family. And even though time goes on and life goes on, I want you guys to know that we're still here for you. You can always still reach out to us, your old great supervisors or your TAs and PAs and your CIs. We're all here for you. We're here for you, okay? So don't hesitate to contact us whenever you need us. And especially as you guys are getting ready to review for your exams or whatever, okay? And I don't want you to hesitate and even think twice about it. Contact us if you need us. And again, we love you all and it has been a pleasure working with you all. Have a wonderful day and see you later. Bye.